DoorDash makes you take a picture of the order, like in front of the building. So I kind of set it in front of the building. I took a picture of it and then I kind of swooped it. So that maybe that's where I felt uh, the guilt. Yeah, you didn't mention that whole part. That's a whole different. Uh... <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Doing good. Is this the uh, is this the get? Yes. Is this um, who is this? This is Dan. What's up? Dan, I've been waiting for you. How's it going? I've been doing well. Been doing well. How's uh how's your day been so far? Uh my day has my day's been okay. Uh I'm actually feeling be- okay. this is probably the best my I felt emotionally um today, so I'm happy to this, this moment. be here in this moment. Yeah, this moment right now. Actually no, probably like fifteen been- minutes. Probably, probably fifteen minutes ago, but um Okay. You know. There. That's valid. Dan, how can I get you today? Is there anything particularly called in to talk about? Yeah, I uh, I wanted to. I mean, I've I've lots to talk about. Um, but yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, so I I do DoorDash sometimes for some extra cash. Um, and I I have I've stolen a couple orders a couple times, different situations, but I I stole an order recently, and I've been trying to to think. If I'm morally in the right, um, you know, in stealing some of these orders. Um, so this case, I had uh, a lady uh, who basically I, I picked up an order, drove to the address. She didn't give me any like info on how to deliver the order, you know, anything like that. And then she was just, I, and then I think there was just something that said she would like meet me. And then I waited for like five minutes, called her, no response. Um, and then I just took it. And I felt kind of bad after, but I don't know. What do you think? Do you think I was in the right? You waited how long? Like five minutes, five, ten minutes. I called her like Did... three, four times, sent her messages. I don't oh. know eat that shit are you kidding me yeah right she knew she had well you called her four times you waited five minutes yeah you waited five minutes you're now on the clock correct yeah yeah so 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 she's kind of wasted your time from all the other orders you could be getting you know I, i think you're fine did she did she like angrily call you or text you uh saying she that did text me she did text me after she was like uh probably like 10 actually how long how much longer was it it was like, like probably like 20 30 minutes. 20 30 minutes later i was with my girlfriend and yeah she just uh she just called me and she what did she text she me texted you she was like hey where did you leave it where did you leave yeah she was asking me where i left it because i took like a fake <laughs> this is where i was kind of malicious i took a fake picture of it because DoorDash makes you take a picture of the order, like in front of the building. So I kind of set it in front of the building. I took a picture of it and then I kind of swooped it. So that maybe that's where I felt the the guilt. What do you think about that? Yeah, you didn't mention that whole part. That's a whole different. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe maybe I should have mentioned that. That's true. Yeah. What what context does that add? Mm, um. Well, I here here's the thing is I you you <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> gaslit this poor woman woman into thinking <laughs> that I mean she must have been looking around for <laughs> at, for like a good half hour of where the fuck this food was. That's no, that's true. fucked up. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little fucked up. It's a little fucked up that she left me just like waiting there. She knew. She well, yeah, but you didn't. Well, but either. you could have just you could have just left the fucking food and left. <laughs> dude, my, my horny ass is hungry, dude. I'm Your hungry. horny ass is hungry. That pizza smells, dude. It smells good. It smells. What does really you being good. horny have to do with this? <laughs> Horny for the pizza. Okay. Something about it. I don't know. 
Yeah, by, the way, by the way, by the way, I, I told them to ask you. What's your girlfriend's whole? She's like co dashing with you. Yeah, she was. She was just with me. We we're making. We needed some extra money, so we were door dashing. Do you guys split um, the money, or is it just? What's the deal there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now we're like building out a van, so we needed nice. some. We're like full time doing that. I'm a flight mm -hmm. attendant full time, but I've been like. I basically haven't been doing that for the past couple months. I mean, if, um, it's a great way to, it's very funny. Cause uh, like, um, stealing food as a door dasher is way cheaper than actually going buying food. Correct. This, it's a great, it's a good, kind of a life hack, you know, you wait, that's the, stup Chipotle. that's the stupidest thing I think I've ever said on this show. Every, yeah, stealing anything <laughs> is always cheaper than buying it. Yeah, there we go. I okay, mean, good. It's a great life. I, like stealing is great, isn't it? What else have you stolen? What else do you steal? Um, what have it? What have we stolen before? <laughs> what did we? Uh, just like screws and stuff from Home Depot. Don't want to buy. Yeah. Like, uh, what have we stolen from like Target? Oh God. Um. I've I don't, I don't know. I stole a lot of liquor off planes and stuff. As a flight um, attendant? Yeah. I feel like that could get thing. you into some shit. Is that not is, is that, that not a ground? Good? Is that not grounds for like it, losing your job? It's definitely grounds for firing. They like it's like a whole thing. When you like drink on your overnight, like when you when you're at the hotel, you gotta like hide the where you like throw away the liquor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got because they like they coordinate with the housekeeping staff mm -hmm. so you have to like there's like trash cans by the elevators you gotta throw them away by what compelled so it's, it's, you it's like a whole thing what compelled you to steal this woman's food i i told i was hungry it smelled really good it was really really good it was like i think it was like a hot honey pizza it was like this honey that had like this, this. I don't know. I've had it before, and it was tasty. It was really fucking good. Do you regret it? No. Uh, well, now that I'm talking through it with you, like remembering how good the pizza was. <laughs> I, I don't, it was just so good, and there wasn't that much backlash for it. I don't think I got like a bad review or anything. So I don't know. I think. In the end, I don't regret it. It does sound really I don't know. good. Having you put honey on the pizza. Yeah, it was like it was. You gotta try. Have you tried it? Oh uh, yeah, I actually have. I have a uh, this is guy, Professor Pizza, who makes pizzas. Professor the the pizza professor. The professor pizza, yeah. You go to college for that. Well, listen, Daniel. If you don't um, regret it. <laughs> Then it sounds like you're absolved. Okay. That's fair. So I'm good? With who? My I guess myself. I can't I can't an, I cannot I cannot answer the question of whether or not you're good with yourself. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Where do I get the fuck okay. this where can I get where can I get this honey pizza? This sounds really good. Uh, it was, I think it was like a place called like Flyby. 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 It was Flyby. Okay. It was in Arizona, but also there was, there was well, a you know what I think I, you know what I think I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I, I, if, if I do ever go to Flyby to get the pizza, I know for sure that I'm going to pick it up myself. Yeah. Don't door dash. Or I mean, at least like be there when the door dasher comes, you know, have some respect. You know? Daniel, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, not really. <laughs> Gek bless you, sir. You're good. Thank you. Gek bless you. Have a great night. Fuck, that actually sounds really good. Hi there. Hello? Hi, who is this? This is Arrow. What's up? Arrow? Like a bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> what's your life like, Arrow? 
Uh, it's pretty chill, honestly. Okay, what's chill um, about? I, uh, um, I uh, I work where I live, I guess. So it's you like I'm like the uh, yeah. So like I'm like the uh, maintenance guy at this uh, apartment complex, and I also live there. Oh wow! Are you um? Do all of the members of the apartment complex know you by name and wave to you friendlyly as they pass? Oh, yeah, like all the old ladies and stuff. And we have, like, some people that have lived here for a while, and they know me. Mm-hmm. But, like, we have a lot of new residents, too. D- d- tell me, these old ladies, do you have a favorite one? Do you have a favorite old lady? Um... I, I try not to have favorites, but I do have a disfavorite one, so I don't know. Maybe that's backwards, but I do mm. hate one of them. <laughs> mm. Mm. She's, Why uh, do you she's hate like this very, old lady? Uh, fussy. She's like very fussy, you know. And uh, mm. like, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be complaining about old ladies. But <laughs> mm. Let's I dive into I I'm very curious um, about all the angles of, and you don't be afraid let's explore this why initially do you feel as though you hate tell tell me tell me about this old lady that you that you imagined when you imagined the old lady that you hate um she's just like uh like uh i don't know maybe she's like she's really religious you know and I, I don't like we don't like uh, agree with that, you know, like I don't like really like religious people in general. And uh, she but she's cool, you know, she's like uh, she's really nice to your face and stuff. But then she's okay. like, um, she she complains about things that aren't there, you know, like she's all like my my events need to be cleaned out. And then we go there and we clean out our vents. And she was like, you didn't do like the right job or whatever. you yeah. know. And then we had this one window guy come in. And he replaced the windows and he was like, oh, that one lady, I like, he, she has like a reputation around for like being a, a difficult lady, I guess. Okay. With this window guy, you know. So what, is she Buddhist? No, she's just like super Christian. Okay. Like she goes it's to never, a, I feel, well, I don't know why, but it's, it's always, it's always the, the, the old lady, the religious old lady is always, is always Christian. Yeah, never Jewish or perhaps maybe sometimes, but never. I feel like usually Catholic that are Christian. Are cool. Say yeah, that again. Exactly. I feel, I feel like old Jewish ladies are cool. You know, old Jewish ladies like are cool. I've like had a lot of yeah. old Jewish ladies in my life um, who have been very cool. My mother is. Yeah, uh, yeah. she's old, but she's a Jewish lady, and she's cool. Um, and one one day. That is how I will end up as an old Jewish lady. You're gonna be a Jewish old lady. I thought you'd be a I'm Jewish gecko. Um, I'll be some bastard combination of the two. Okay, what now? You, <laughs> this old lady. Okay, this old lady has a reputation. A lot of people have problems with this old lady, yourself included. Um, mm-hmm. but as yet, when I gave you the opportunity to talk about this old lady, you, you. You said, you know what? I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't talk bad about this yeah. old lady. What made you feel like you should not talk bad about this old lady? Like, uh, she, like she's like she's good, you know. Like, if I think about it for for like introspectively, I'm like, she's really just wanting like a good place to live, you know. And yeah. um, she's like disabled. Well, she's not disabled. She like walks around and all that, but she's like on all that disabled stuff. So she like gets her like meals delivered, and somebody drives her around. So like I don't what know. Do you details, mean by you know, she's, she's on all that disabled stuff? I don't know. Like uh, <laughs> like she gets meals delivered to her, and uh, somebody okay. like picks her up from church and like brings her back and forth from church, and she gets like a uh, like a rental discount and stuff like that, and she gets like money from the the state and stuff like that. Okay. And these are all reasons why you don't like her? No, no. It's just, that's just what she's got going on. Okay. I like but this. So this I is a good... Like this is, tell, tell me why you don't like her. Go ahead. She's, she's just fussy. And I'm like, 
like when I ever have to go and do some like work on something in her apartment, it's always like, can you do it like this? Can you do it like that? And like this one, for example, this one time I had to install an outlet and she was like, can you like, I'm, I'm pretty young too. So she was like, do you think we need to get an electrician out here? And I was like, we don't need to get an electrician out here. I can install this outlet. Like it was kind of insulting a little bit. It's like she was questioning my, my uh, professional sure. capabilities. Sure. Well, I wouldn't be insulted because you can do it better than her. Yeah, well, that's fair. Hmm. But I, maybe I was having the trouble, trouble with that outlet too, you know. He mm-hmm. didn't say that for no reason, but I was like right, mildly right. insulted. So. She she must she was probably right. You probably couldn't do it. Well, you probably needed to call an electrician. But that doesn't make you, <laughs> uh, you know, a piece of shit. It just means you couldn't install yes. this, this outlet, and that was what needed that yeah. that was what needed to be done. the The mm-hmm. ego had to be sacrificed, uh, to achieve the common goal of having the outlet fixed. I, I do have an ego problem. So, you know, you're good at this gecko job. I got to tell you, tell me, tell me more about this, this ego problem. If you desire to, um, just, uh, like, I think I'm the best, you know, like, uh, <laughs> like, um, I got like, uh, I, I tell people all the time. I, I only have one set of wisdom teeth. So that makes me like the next like evolved thing, you know, but it's really, it's really just like BS. I also tell everybody like I could probably fight a bear if I wanted to, and like come out on top. But you, like I know that that's BS yeah, too. Do you really believe that? Oh no, probably not. So but I would like it? to try. Just, just, just cause of that ego, you know. Just like I'm just like okay. talking shit. Does your ego ever get you into trouble? Yeah, it did. But how uh, you got you, you have a lot of people on your on your show talking about relationship stuff. So we can. I feel like well, l- listen. We we talked about a lot of stuff, and and I'm curious about you as a person. So if if the answer to this question involves something with a relationship, you can feel free to talk about it. Um. Uh, yeah, no, I'll talk about it. I just like I thought like uh, that I could do better than this one chick. That I that I was dating, and it turns out like I really liked her, you know, and she was awesome. And I should have just like been checked the ego, you know, and been like, it's not about doing better; it's about just being happy where you are, you know, like that kind of philosophy stuff, like of just sure. like like just just being comfortable with where you're at, not being like, oh, I can do better. And then not not that wanting better is wrong, but like thinking that of other people is wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, how when did you break up with this girl? A couple of years ago, and I'm still hung up about it. Just because yesterday was Valentine's Day, too, you know. How long did it take for you to come to the realization that you've just told me? Like, probably a million years. You said it took a million years? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It took way longer than it should have, you know, for me to okay. like be okay with it. But you know, that's whatever. Well, I have a few thoughts about this. One is you're you're probably uh, the reason I don't talk about I, you. Met, you kind of brought up this relationship thing sparingly. Um, with this, uh, maybe this idea that I didn't want to talk about it. I think the reason why I don't talk about relationship stuff that often is is because it's so complicated and uh i don't have my own wits about it either but this this as an overall philosophical concept this idea that you thought you could do better so you you gave up what was directly in front of you to search for something else and then realized that you might have been better off actually fully investing yourself into what was in front of you Instead of searching for the the greener grass, that's kind of the that's mm. kind of what we're talking about, right? 
Yeah, like that one quote from The Office. I wish you would know you were in the in like the green, the good times when you're in the yeah. good times or whatever, something like that. I was, I literally was just talking to somebody about about the ending of The Office. Yeah, because it's about this. Um, well, l- here's what I'll say. Um, you seem like a self-aware guy. I hope you're not beating yourself up about this because this is very valuable information to have. Um, you said you're a young guy. You are, you know, this is a valuable information to have and apply to your life. Because I agree with it so much. It's the only thing. There's no, there's <laughs> you, there's never, there's never anything better than what is, you know. Um, I'm not gonna say there's never anything better, but you, there's a lot that's in front of you to be appreciated and valued and you can um, lose sight of that when you, you know, quote, think you can do better. Yeah. Um, so look, like, uh, moving kinda, forward, go ahead. W- moving forward for you, how do you feel like you want to apply this epiphany to your life um maybe like i find myself whenever i'm in conversation talking about myself a lot you know and i have to like kind of like uh like check that i'm trying to like uh be interested in other people you know and um uh like what with like like I, I find it hard to ask them like to be interested and ask questions about them you know like like uh be like oh i I just kind of find myself dozing off you know like i don't really care it's not about me so i don't really care you know yeah yeah Hmm. have you always been like this yeah i think so why do you think you're like this uh i don't know i'm just like um, I've always been in my own head, you know, just like when I was a kid, I would like just kind of like, uh, just like play by myself. You know, I, I had friends and stuff like I would hang out with people, but I was always like kind of like a loner and I'm, I'm a loner today too. So I'm just, I'm like, I'm like very self-aware. I'm very constantly like, like, yeah. uh, like there's like this one philosophy thing where it's like, if you're a machine and you spend too much energy, like looking at yourself then uh, you're you're spending too much. You're not spending enough energy doing things or being productive. You know, you're spending all that energy, like constantly checking yourself. Like, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, you don't matter cosmically, which is yeah, great sure. news because wouldn't mm-hmm. that be stressful if you did? It would be, honestly. I'm not, I'm not, not the best at things, so we would all be doomed. Hmm. What's your name? Arrow? Uh, yeah, and that's my real name, too. I mean, it's not like a fake name. I don't know. Maybe no, I shouldn't give that out, but like... It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But like... Uh, um, but shout out, shout out all the arrows out there, you know? I appreciate the shout out. Uh, Arrow, look, I'm going to say a couple things before we go. Um... You're clearly very self-aware. And I think it's a powerful tool. And I I think... I don't know. I feel like anything I would say to you, you already know. But I think that... You're potentially closing yourself off to a lot of life. That's kind of what ego does. Is it, mm-hmm. is it, is it narrows? Cause right now you're the, cause the scope of life is everyone and everything. And then your ego is uh, limiting that infinite scope to just you. And that's, that's, you know, a, a narrow scope to live in. And so I, I think you understand that you'd be happier if you widened that scope a little bit. Um, look the old lady in the eye and really think about how much you love her. Yeah, I was thinking it kind of goes back to that old lady you were saying something earlier. Like, yeah, I don't know, I forgot. 
Next time an old next time an old lady is really pissing you off, just look at her in the eye and think about how much you love mm-hmm. her. Arrow. Oh, well. Love her how? Just think about how much you love this sweet old lady. She's a cosmic miracle of the universe. Oh. And you have the honor of helping her fix this fucking outlet. Heck yeah. Arrow, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, I'm going to the Hawaii show, so I'll, I, uh, I'll see you there. You're going to the Hawaii it's show? It says here you live in fucking Arizona. What are you doing? Yeah, in the, the Tucson, the, this guy's popular I'm talking to. He, uh, the Tucson show was like, like sold out, and I wanted that exclusive merch, so I was like, screw it. I'm going to Hawaii. Uh, I need a vacation <laughs> from all these old ladies. Okay, man. Well, I'll see you there. We'll uh, please, we'll come up, come up on stage. We'll we'll talk more about this. Heck yeah, sounds good, man. All right, man. I'll talk Have to you soon. Night, Thanks man. for calling, Arrow. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, hey, Lyle. What's up? How are you doing? Hanging in there. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, what's up, Caleb? What uh, What did you want to talk about tonight? So, um, this might sound kind of trivial or dumb, uh, but uh, pretty much what's going on is uh, I've got a, a Discord group uh, that I play games with about uh, three or four times a week after work. And uh, we've been doing this for the past I would say three years, and uh, I would say we're all pretty good, uh, pretty good friends with each other. Um, one of these friends uh, decided to try out uh, VTubing on Twitch, maybe three or four months ago, and uh, we've all been very supportive of her, and uh, she's been doing pretty well. I would say uh, within the past month, she's uh, gotten to around 150 followers on Twitch and uh, uh, this weekend uh, she did a bunch of back-to-back collabs with a bunch of other VTubers and she's networking and uh, she's made I would say like uh, six or seven other VTubers that uh, she's now friends with and it's uh, the most recent stream which is actually just a few moments ago um, she put in uh, the chat uh, the Discord link for the VTuber Discord and uh, I joined uh, but then uh, she uh, cut the stream short said she had a stomach ache and then pretty much sent me a message saying hey you know my VTuber friends get kind of unhinged is what she put it and uh, I don't and you know she's like I don't necessarily want people I know to see the things they say and stuff like that. And and I told her I respect that. And and I told her I felt left out, but you know, I'm an adult and whatever. So I left the discord, but I don't know. I, I feel jealous. It's, uh, I feel like a, a friend I've known for three years is, I don't know. It's maybe it's the whole weekend of, back-to-back collabs that so it, normally that during the weekends we always get together as a group and play games uh but yeah it's uh i felt kind of insulted and like i like i couldn't handle you know strangers on the internet making uh, i guess dirty jokes or whatever and and uh, it kind of cut off from that and uh it kind of stung a little because you know we were all supportive and i was supportive but I don't know. So that's that's what I'm here to vent about. And, uh, you know, a Discord of VTubers has got to be the easiest community to sneak into anonymously. Because <laughs> I have you can just... Kids. You know, it wouldn't be... Because you, you, you can just, like, pretend a, that you're... You can just pretend like you're a dog and, like, make your voice a little bit higher and then you're a different guy. I, you know, I did think about that. I'll be honest. But mm-hmm. I feel like that would end up being <laughs> that's not really honoring the request. 
Oh no, you totally but should I, not do that. Uh okay, so <laughs> so um all right, you were friends with this person for three years. They got into this VTuber lifestyle, and you feel as though you have been left mm. out now. Yeah, and uh, I guess I'm... Yeah. Okay, so does your do you and your friends still play games together, or has she totally left that group as well? Uh, well, that's... Look, we're going to find out. I'm sure we will, and I don't see any reason why we won't. It's just this, uh, uh, I think it's just the way things were scheduled with the collab she did. It just, it, it made it feel very much in the face of like, it's just, okay, time we'd normally, you know, hey, you know, let's do some gaming. And now she's streaming with other people. And, and uh, it, it, Okay. It's probably not as bad as it is. It just it it, it feels very in in my face and like well I don't know. Okay. It feels like we're can being I flo- but who knows? Can I? Yeah. I want to flow. I want to float a few ideas by you, and you can tell me how you feel about them. Um, sure. Look. Your friend has this whole other group of friends now, with her in her VTuber club, and she yeah. wants to explore that and uh you know maybe have that separate from other groups of friends that she has and if that's what she desires you got to you got to let her do that you know i think to 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 be upset or get jealous is you know becomes possessive and uh yeah. You that's the that's just that's just toxic poison for relationships, possessiveness and jealousy. Um and so I think you should let her go do her VTuber thing. And if she decides that she wants to come back to the group and, and play video games with you guys, then that's awesome. And if she does decides that she doesn't, then you know then okay, you 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 have to just let her do whatever she's gonna do. Yeah, and who knows? It she may come back, but you're right. You're right. It is a possessive. It, it is toxic, and uh, but I just I I do feel that way, and it's I'm not really sure how to to help counter that emotion. And, or. Uh, you could make a super hot anime guy avatar, buy a voice changer to make your uh, voice sound like uh, gravelly and sexy, and um, you know become the most popular guy in the VTuber group, and you know get her back there. <laughs> uh, that's some solid advice. Now she she is in a relationship with someone who's also in the friend group, so it it would. Would never be anything like that, but mm. <laughs> but yeah, maybe if I become a VTuber, then do I do I do I count <laughs> as a VTuber? Because I'm 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 like I'm somewhat halfway in between because I'm not myself and I'm a, a creature thing. So I feel like I'm I'm point five of a VTuber. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I have not looked up the uh, the official definition of a VTuber. <laughs> Uh, Caleb, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, uh, no, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, if people want separate space, you know, you got to respect it. And, and, you know, don't be toxic and uh, instead just vent your emotions to the uh, lizards on the internet. Uh, thank you for calling, Caleb. You have a good rest of the night. You too. Thanks. Yeah, um, I understand. The, I understand the mourning because he feels like he's losing his friend to this other group. Um, but you have no idea. It also sounds like this VTuber thing is a very recent thing for her. So who knows how it'll play out? But uh, in the meantime, you know, just hang out and play games with whoever's still in the Discord. 
you know Hi, uh, don't don't forget about those fo- don't for- we're we're so busy focusing on those who leave that we forget about those who stayed Caleb focus on those who stayed hello hello hi how's it going you tell me how's it going with you it's uh it's going good it's going good uh um, what did you uh, want to talk about today yeah so i i'm actually getting circumcised in a couple of weeks you're getting circumcised yeah i thought that usually happens when you're a child yeah yeah no not for me though not for me why have you decided to get circumcised so late in your life? Because um, it just uh, doesn't make sex very comfortable. At least for me personally. Having a foreskin? Yeah, yeah. It, it usually does apparently, but for me, it's it's uh, not not like that. <laughs> okay. How does one go about getting circumcised as an adult? Um, like, like, what's like the process? Yes. Well, uh, you just go to like, go to like your local urology place, and they usually check you out. And I, I didn't have to; it wasn't like mandatory. It's more of like a personal choice. But yeah, they just uh, they check out your penis, and they they let you know what's going on, and and then you just get ready for a surgery. I would be concerned for you if this was mandatory. Yeah, no, that that is a thing though. And I was worried that I had that. It's um it's called phimosis. It's where like your um your foreskin can get trapped behind the head and kind of like cut circulation. Really? So like your foreskin works like a rubber band on your penis and you have to cut it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I kind of had that and it felt kind of uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, like is this like, is this like, because it, it can get like stuck back. There. Luckily, it didn't get stuck for me, but it was just, it was a little freaky, you know? Okay. So this is that factor into the reason why you decided to get circumcised? Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, it's kind of a hassle. I just, I'd rather just be cut, you know? Okay. Um, so how does this work? Do they put you under anesthesia? Yeah, yeah, no, I'll be, I'll be knocked out. Thank God. Okay. Are you looking forward to it? Um, oh man. I mean, okay. So the the way I'm kind of processing this is like, it's kind of just going to be like hell for a month and then it'll be like, and then I'll be like worry free and I'll be fine. Why will it be hell um, for a month? Because you have like stitches in your dick and you can't get erections. You can't get erections. So like, wait a minute. So is it like if you get... So is it like if you do get an erection, the stitches will break? Um, I think so. I, I think it's something like that. I just... Well, so I've done some research though and, um... Getting, getting boners like it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it's not like it'll fuck up your dick. Like it, it, it actually like helps the healing process apparently, but it's just like really painful. So getting erections helps the healing process. Yeah. I mean, that's what I read online. I can't even totally remember how that's possible, but yeah. Um, are you planning to stay clear of any sort of sexual things that might give you an erection so that you don't pop your stitches? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to just probably like delete social media for a bit to just avoid any, like any of that, any, okay. like thirst traps or anything. And I'm just going to, yeah. I'm going to do my best, but we'll, uh, yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Cause I, so, I also usually just like, 
I'll just wake up with an erection, you know? So I'm, I'm worried that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you most looking forward to in your new life as a circumcised man? Probably, like, not being, like... Because, like, it, it made me, like, nervous to have sex because it was just uncomfortable, you know? And to be mm-hmm. free of that is going to be... It's going to be amazing. Are you Jewish? <laughs> no, no, I'm not Jewish. I wish. Interesting. You can pass for Jewish now. For uh, I don't know how yeah, helpful yeah. that is. That was another but thought. But if, if there's a situation... there usually, Throughout history, there have not been many situations where passing as Jewish has been beneficial. But who knows about the future? Now you have that option. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, I was thinking about, I was thinking, so before I even, like, considered getting circumcised, I was like, damn, like, I just, I'm just, I can't be Jewish, but now, now it will be an option. You were thinking about the fact that you can't be Jewish? Yeah. Well, you, do you have to get circumcised to be Jewish? Clue, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, no, thank you. Hey, take care. You too. I'm uncir- I'm I am circumcised. I am circumcised. I was circumcised when I was a child. Um and I remember the first time that I saw an uncircumcised penis while watching pornography and it scared the shit out of me cuz I was like I didn't know that that went up that far. It looked like the Alaskan bullworm from Spongebob. I thought there was something wrong with that guy's penis. But it turns out there was something wrong with mine. Uh, but now I'm happily, happily circumcised. Uh, does it make sex better? I don't know. I don't have, a, I don't have a, uh, a reference to compare it to. Now that would be an interesting thing if you could uncircumcise yourself. If they could somehow graph on... The foreskin of another guy onto my penis. Someone look into this for me. Tell me if it's possible. Hello? Hello? How are you? I'm good. What's going on? Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just chilling. I'm uh, having a drink and uh, vibing. How about yourself? Um, I'm chilling. I'm talking to people on the computer as a gecko. Dude, you sound very different. I know like everybody says this, but you sound very different than you do on the streams. Yeah, I've heard everyone says it. Uh, yeah. So, Elijah, what's going on with you today? How can I get you? What's going on? How's life? Um... Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm just kind of over here vibing and, and uh, kind of wanted to talk about my experience being an openly uh, queer person while in the armed forces. Oh, sure. What, um, how, how long have you been in the armed forces for? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I just got out. Uh, three and a half years was my time. It's funny. Uh, I've t- I I talk to people in the military, and some of them are like, "Oh, this was um, this was like the best thing I've ever done." And then other people are like, "Oh, this is um, you know, uh, uh, was a terrible decision." So it always feel like it. Uh, I get I get kind of varied opinions on it. Yeah, I mean, the thing about the military is it's basically like. A capitalist cult. It's how I'd describe it. But, uh, but it, yeah, I don't regret joining. I'm glad that I did it. But, uh, it, it's very much you're, you're selling your body to the government. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so what you said you wanted to talk about being openly gay in the military. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm bisexual to be specific. But, um, yeah, no, it's a very weird thing being, um, around uh 
Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Um, I just oh, I didn't actually expect no, to be it's here. Okay, man. Well, listen to me, Are you not looking at the chat? Are you? No, no. <laughs> okay. Well, don't look at the chat. Um, don't be nervous. It's just you and me talking about 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 yeah. what you want to talk about. We we can we don't even have to talk for long if you don't want to talk for long. We don't have to even talk about you know whatever whatever you're feeling, man. It's all right. We're just we're just chilling out on the phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right, yeah. so listen, so tell me yeah, this. No. So, so, so you obviously felt like this affected you enough. You you were compelled enough to call in about it. You know, tell me about kind of the ways that 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 this, um, you know, impacted you. Your your experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I feel like it's just more of like a, it's the dissonance between I feel a queer culture, and the culture of the military, or or the kind of. Um, because I feel like the military attracts a very specific type of person. And I, it's like, I feel like it's a lot of conservative men and a lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of, a lot of aggressively, like, I, I, I kind of use this term with the call screener, a lot of like, aggressively straight men, just like the kind of, like if you insinuate that they might have some form of queer meaning, then they almost get insulted uh, in a weird way. Um, don't know if you've interacted with that kind of person, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a strange experience. I'll, I'll say that. I'll say that. So um, were, was anyone ever like directly, um, hostile toward you? Um, no, not directly. Um, okay. I think a lot of it was just, just, um, I mean, I mean, there's like one instance where somebody outright used the F slur towards me. Um, uh, I mean, but that was in a very specific circumstance that I that I don't feel is uh, accurate to say is, that would describe. It, 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 it was an exception you, to the rule, moreover. Okay. Okay, so they used it. There's been a lot of reform. There's been a lot of reform in the military to do a lot to, you know, equal opportunity programs have been implemented. There's been a lot of progress made. Okay, so they used it, but in a in a way that you personally would not have described as hostile. No, it was like, it was definitely hostile, but but that was a, it was a person that is not indicative of the majority of members of the armed service. Okay. Okay. So you 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 do feel like um I mean overall that do, do you do you feel that overall the the system itself um you know is has as you said cleaned up its act to be uh you know less hostile toward toward uh queer people? Uh, yeah, the system itself has it's just there's a lot of cultural problems that still need, that are still it, it, it's a big machine so it takes a long time to fix it what made you want to join if that makes any sense um eh, to be quite honest uh it, it's weird because I, I still kind of don't know it um I kind of like dropped out of college and didn't know what else to do. And so I just kind of went with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're 22? Yes. All right. So how much more service do you have to do? Um, I, I actually, I recently separated. I left the military the June of this year or this last okay. year. So what do you, what do you want to do now? Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm looking to eventually go into the music industry. Uh, kind of fancy myself a bit of a songwriter. Um, I haven't you know released anything yet. Uh, I've kind of just struggling with a you know, finding my way and you know, finding my own personal method of artistic expression. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. So I, I, I do want to ask, uh, 
were there any positives that you gained from the military or, or anything that you're taking with you that was good for your life or a good experience or anything like that? Um, I'd say it's the ability to see, like the ability to see the kind of, like to, to, um, exist in an environment, an environment that is adverse to you. I would say. Huh. Um, and by, okay. So you mentioned like people, you use the, the, the term aggressively straight and you felt as though that was the environment. Yes. Yes. Uh, To a large part. Um, the, the thing about the military currently is, or specifically with the army is there's this weird division going on uh-huh. between what is called old army and new army. Mm-hmm. Um, old army being the kind of people that are like, uh, old army just being like the, the kind of people that like that served in Desert Storm, like, shut the shut the fuck up, private, do what you're told, you know, and you know there. There's a lot of hazing that happened in the old army, straight up, and sure. some of those people don't really believe that that was too far from what ought to be happening. And uh, the 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 environment that that the leadership in in the army currently is trying to foster the new army, um, you know, that it's it's a little bit it's it's, it's more progressive and it's trying to root out a lot of the the problems that the old army had, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's a weird thing going on right now. So you were like these, these guys that you were talking about, would you, would you consider them, I guess, part of old army? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those old army guys, and unfortunately old army, they've, they've been in for a while, so they've gotten rank and they're, they're in the leadership now. So, it, it, it's a weird thing where we're, you're trying to flush those guys out of the leadership and that, that by nature, unless you take a lot of direct action is going to happen gradually. Okay. So y- you felt as though the environment was adverse for you. I mean, were there, did you make, how, how t- tell me again, how long you were in the army for? I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, three and a half years. Okay, it's so the in those standard three... first contract. I mean, in those three and a half years, did you meet anyone at all the, who you did connect with or even who you felt very different from but could connect with anyway or, or have any experiences like that where, you know... Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, the, 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 the military has done a lot of work to try to, um, uh, to, try to foster an environment of... Um, a more inclusive environment recently. Um, granted, like I said, it's happening slowly. Um, but yeah, no, like I knew several people that were, uh, one, I met some of my best friends in the world and while I served. Um, okay. Like one of my best homies ever, like I won't say his name, but I, I met him in the military and we're, we're tight to this day. Like we, we, we still talk. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good friends, and a lot of it's like the shared adversity that comes with military experience, right? You know. Yes. Yeah. No. Getting. Um. I think. Uh. Suffering together definitely brings people closer. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, I I guess the reason I'm asking you these kinds of questions is because, um, you know, I mean, look, you 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 gave you know three and a half years of your life to this thing. I I I I assume that even though it was difficult, that there there there's got to be some, you know, just for your own personal sake, positive things to take away from it as you move forward. I mean, yeah, for sure. I um, I was actually telling a buddy about of mine about this recently. Uh, one of my favorite memories in my life came from when I was at a so like every like a few years they make us go to Fort Irwin and do our training for deployment. And, um, my particular job requires me to be 
uh, up on like a hill, some form of elevation where I can observe where the enemy is uh, at and um, provide targeting data. So I remember it's like, I want to say like midnight or something, zero dark 30. And uh, my leadership knocks on the door of the striker. They're like, hey, uh, FOs, that's my job. I'm an FO. Or I was an NFO. I was a uh, Fister, but not an FO. But uh, it's, uh, it's like, hey, Fisters, you're going out to the OP. Wait, it's hell at night. And in the desert, in California, it gets pretty cold. Like, it, it is not a fun experience. And I did not bring enough sleeping gear with me. But I remember having that experience, like, sleeping on this rocky mountain, this rocky-ass mountain in the cold. And then I look up, and there's, like, zero light pollution out there. And I, I just remember seeing the stars and just being like, I, I, I've, never, I never, I've never felt as lucky to be alive as I have in that moment. Like, just, it's something about seeing the stars, real, like, acknowledging the reality and the absurdness of the world around me, and the, and the, I don't know, something about that experience, it, it was just so surreal, and yeah. I just felt, like, so lucky in the experience. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, that's, you know, it gets you outside. See, that's one of the great things yeah. about being in the military is it gets you out of the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely do that. Huh. Well, I'm glad that you got uh, something out of out of the experience. And uh, I'm sorry if you felt like it was hostile for you. But, you know, okay, so it, it, I will say this before we go. When I, I, I asked you what the most positive thing you got out of it was, and you said that that the the adversity was the positive thing you got out of it because you learned how to be in a place with people who are different from you um or you know who who might have been um not great to you and there is there's a lot of value in that you know it's probably not an environment you <clears throat> want to spend your whole life in but it's a good to have that skill of knowing how to maneuver through that kind of a thing you know if it ever visits upon you again or yeah. just to know that you can uh one more time please I, uh, I Elijah is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go um uh yeah no uh, just uh, uh appreciate uh, appreciate you Lyle for uh, running this um, yeah I, I, I really enjoy the fuck out of your streams uh, Thanks, make working the 9 to 5 a little bit more bearable and uh, all of you people out there you're beautiful and uh, keep keep living your best life man uh, don't let anybody tell you to be different than who you are thank you Elijah you take care Gek bless you Gek bless you I've thought about joining the military before but but then I didn't.